Today we will visit one of the most important archaeological discoveries made in recent times, the ancient city of Duki Gel in modern-day Sudan. These recently discovered ruins in southern Sudan are fascinating archaeologists. Situated less than one kilometer away from the Nubian site of Kerma, they display an intricate architecture unseen until now. It now stands as one of the oldest historical sites in Africa, dating back 4,000 years. Kerma was one of the most ancient archaeological sites of ancient Nubia. It housed thousands of dwellings and tombs, and throughout Kemetic history, Nubia was the refuge of lower Nile Kemetic dwellers, whenever invaders, foreign to their culture, would encroach. Nubia is where Egyptians went to rekindle their culture, but was also their ancestral home. It is therefore very interesting to find another civilization, bordering Kerma with a completely distinctive culture. One that was peopled by populations further south of Nubia, but equally impressive, not just in its size, but also in its intricacy. Increasingly, important archaeological discoveries are being made in sub-Saharan Africa. Give us a like and leave a comment if you want us to cover more this type of content. In 2018, a Sudanese archaeological mission discovered an ancient urban complex with the largest building holding more than 1,400 columns. These gigantic constructions clearly point to a very sophisticated society with a very distinctive sub-Saharan architecture as evidenced by the circular motifs. This site was named Duki Gel. The area was occupied in 5000 BC, but it isn't until 2000 BC that it emerges as a true city and a veritable trading center bordering the Central African civilizations and the nubio kemetic civilization complex. Look at the sheer size of the unearthed constructions. Some of its mesmerizing buildings and temples are well over 100 meters wide, with towering walls and support structures. For comparisons, the ziggurats of Mesopotamia, which existed in the same period, were 40 to 50 meters in size. Archaeologist Charles Bonnet, who was part of the team that excavated the site, attests that these urban centers began flourishing around 2000 BC. By 1450 BC, Duki Gel had become an important military commercial hub, and encroachment from its northern neighbor from the nubio kemetic civilization complex started to increase. This caused the inhabitants of Duki Gel to build very sophisticated defensive structures that they incorporated into their castles and temples. In its principal buildings, you can see the semicircular stands towering the outside walls and fake entrances, a perfect setup for archery defense. This was in addition to the city's outside defensive walls. The main palace housed alleyways leading to a three chairs throne, all of them with different height, implying a hierarchy of its ruling class. In Duki Gel, almost all of the important buildings had circular motifs, while Kerma had a distinctive nubio kemetic architecture. Their building technique is said to be from the south, deeper in Central Africa. Many Nubian texts allude to a coalition of peoples, deeper from the interior of Africa, that banded together to try and counter nubio kemetic influence. Here, this 3D reconstruction also shows their original defensive structures. These fortifications are the largest anywhere along the Nile. They attest to the strength of the neighbors to the north, but also to the military adaptation of the different culture Nubians to the south. Another 3D reconstruction shows an assortment of temples. This type of architecture is not seen anywhere else in the Nile Valley. Monumental entrances protect the town at the mouths of its border walls. One of the main structures in its entrance can only be described as gigantic, measuring 70 meters wide. We can find outside gates with wide alleyways that will later be used by the Kemetic rulers to build a typical Egyptian alleyway similar to the one found in between the Karnak and Luxor temples.
In the northern zone of this town, two sizable fronts were erected. Models of these structures are simply impressive. Notice these conic side columns that are similar in function and style to Mandinka architecture. Small temples of very complex layout have also been found with processional pathways leading to ceremonial altars. In 1450 BC, the town was invaded by Tuthmosis I. The pharaoh proceeded to add Egyptian motifs to the site. That began the Kemetic colonization era of Duki Gel that would end in the 25th dynasty with King Taharqa. Later on, Tuthmosis I's daughter, Queen Hatshepsut, rebuilt the town of Duki Gel. It is interesting to see that even during this Kemetic colonization period, local gods were respected. This was easy, as in many cases, these gods were the same. This confirms the cultural lineage between Kemet, Nubia, and in this case, Duki Gel. A large cache of objects have also been found, dating back to the Kemetic reconstruction of the town. In this case, the name of Tuthmosis IV can be found on the relics. As Kemet changed during the Amarna era, various markings have been found that show this influence on the then-colonized Duki Gel. This continued all the way to the 25th dynasty, when King Taharqa reintroduced the distinctive circular architecture with circular motifs and round columns. The Nubian King Taharqa also ordered the construction of various temples throughout the Sudan. Interestingly, these temples all have the same floor plan. The site continued to evolve well into the Meroitic era and retained its significance and distinctive architecture. This site doesn't get the media coverage it really deserves. This is a major find, one that is showing the true ingenuity and technological prowess of the Central African civilizations, the same one that migrated north a millennia before and started what we now call Egypt, thanks to King Names. It is at this point that two cultures start to evolve in different directions and separate a people from the same origin into two impressive kingdoms. What Duki Gel shows is that well into the Bronze Age, civilization from Central Africa already had complex technological and social development, development that was inherited in multiple forms by the various later civilizations in Black Africa. But most importantly, it shows that more studies have to be done to unearth further archaeological gems deeper in the continent. We'll leave you with a few more images of this historical gem. Don't miss our previous documentary on the history of Africa from 15,000 BC to 300 AD. If you like this kind of format and content, leave us a comment. You can support more of this content by buying us a cup of coffee or supporting us on Patreon. Follow us and see how those who are said to be without history birthed civilization itself.
Follow us and see how those who are said to be without history birthed civilization itself.